Typically, when you're attacking web servers, they're running on servers that are in data centers. And I wanted to take a moment to demystify what a data center is. And this isn't a main focus of this video, but it's worth mentioning that data centers really are just buildings that have an internet connection and a lot of power, space, and cooling for servers. There's nothing particularly special about the resources that data centers provide to web servers except data centers are really good at having some kind of methodology and approach for security uh, for any of the assets that they contain, in fact, but security in particular for web servers. Oftentimes, data centers will have elaborate physical security, very few windows, lots of barriers and biometrics, that kind of thing. They'll have really good staff that understand uh, how to prevent social engineering, how to prevent intrusion, physical intrusion. And they'll have really good security throughout the process. So they've covered the people, the process, and the technology quite a bit. And in fact, the technology is pretty thoroughly understood as well. They usually have really good firewalls, uh, routers, switches, DMZs, all that kind of stuff. So data centers are really hard to intrude on in a number of different ways. They're, they're relatively hard to attack for an attacker, even though they contain stuff that we want. The web servers obviously are a great target for these attacks, but if they're in a data center and the data center is regularly patched and the, and the servers in the system are regularly updated and verified, validated, if the physical access to them is prevented, all of that goes into the fact that there needs to be another way for us to compromise web servers that are housed in a data center. And that's what this is about, is finding other ways rather than sneaking in or rather than social engineering to compromise the web servers in that data center. So primarily in the client server code area, there's a lot of cloud-based applications, a lot of software that runs in both the client and the server, executes really on the server side, but can do some horsepower on the client, can have local files, can have local processing consumption, especially with some of the new versions of Internet Explorer where they do some DirectX locally and some rendering locally. There's all kinds of, of interaction between the two. And when we're looking at client-server code, uh, these are the areas that you're going to see are, are really common, and they're common across a few different categories of vulnerability. Uh, client server code that fails to check parameters is often subject to uh, URL-based attacks or SQL injection attacks. Forms that are unprotected, often users can download those or attackers can download those and examine the source code behind them for things like hidden fields or hidden tags, which while in theory prevent some attackers from compromising them, don't do any real good at all. Data non-validated, not scrubbing the data for an application developer is certainly a recipe for disaster. As you'll see in the SQL injection video, that's the primary way that we can get database code running. And oftentimes we can actually get arbitrary code running when data is not validated or URLs are not validated. Also often code is not segregated code that is running on a web server or a web client is usually running in the exact same context as the locally logged in user or as the system actually in a highly privileged high access state instead of running in a least privileged state or a contained state which means that if we can execute arbitrary code either on the client or the server we've got the potential for a massive compromise and even when Web servers are, are relatively well restricted and secured when some of the data on the on the client side or the server side is actually protected. It's oftentimes the connection itself that's the weak part. If the website's not using SSL or certainly SSL 3 and TLS 1, there's the potential for compromising the data in route or even altering the data in route. Those are other great ways to attack client-server code or client-server communications.